think cities always were smart. I think we have cities because they are smart solutions to the very basic human needs to come together and transact. And I was thinking, you know, Roman cities used to be very successful because of the way they were designed. You know, they were designed in a way that people could really easily move through space. You know, they're fantastic examples of where people have come up with uh, solving a city challenge. Like, for example, in London, you know, when they tried to solve the, they called it the Great Stink, when there was such so much sewage came up with the sewage network and that had very broad implications across the city mm -hmm. and he designed it in a way that it actually came up with a number of different positive outcomes that yes it solved the sewage and also the cholera as a result of the disease um, but it also opened up new public spaces in the city so the south bank throughout the, the 20th century they've declined and they've not really found a way to adapt to this third industrial revolution Within a city you can have different versions of what, what smart is as well. One of the, the great things about London is that you have all that diversity and as a result you can create. What is a digitised planning system? Surely it's more than just digital information submitted in that format. Providing this digital platform, so the cloud, where planners, the public, businesses and academia could kind of interact and exchange ideas as to what they think the built environment should look like. But there's also the cloud of human activity in cities. And I, I like to think of that as another complementary kind of cloud. And what will the implications be for these two clouds interacting? Uh, the, the online cloud and the online cloud. A lot of people just don't know how to do it yet. So we're thinking of developing some CBD programs or developing a toolkit, but also running education courses within universities to kind of help architects really embrace big data. Everyone's interested in space. The architect, the engineer, the property consultant, the person who's buying and selling the space, uh, the anthropologist, the archaeologist, they're all interested in space. We understand space. It seems it provides us with a common language, a common professional language. Smart cities are facing a new kind of democracy. However, I think the challenge for the for the city governments is find a new mode of democracy which can actually incorporate these technologies and these groups more effectively. It's going to be not that dissimilar to how it is today, and actually still very messy. Um, still have lots of different opinions, maybe even louder people's voices um, coming through through technology is which is a positive thing as well, but um, I think people forget that technology can be a very democratic thing. And, and I, I think this, this openness, this networking, is the way cities work. Mm -hmm. uh, the grid of the city, the street grid of the most internationally typical form of city planning uh, is this open lattice that doesn't constrain the behaviour of people. And I believe it is directly analogous to attitudes to learn, to make them open and free. The future city, I, I, I'm not sure what it will look like. There are sort of statistics knocked around that 70 or 80 percent of our building stock will still be here in 50 years' time. It's not just us working with technology, it's that we are changing, almost evolving with technology. Of what the vision is, you know, you have to make sure it's for the people, it's not just, you know, this technological robot, it's actually serving a purpose and that the purpose is pretty good. So. And I think that idea of solving a city challenge at um, a systemic level, to thinking of you know, as many positive benefits you can have with your particular solution is a, almost a smart way of thinking. It's, it's the interaction between technology and people and place. 
it's the functionality of the place, how people live and work and play within it, and how they do so, that is going to look very different. I think in some ways the future city will bear more resemblance to the historic city before the 20th century. Slower city, a much more intensive city. The future has to be around culture built on education, landscape and tourism.